Hi everyone, welcome in to Love Tech. I'm Andrew Loveland. Today we're going to be talking about iOS 13.4. Now this is a huge milestone update from Apple because now it is adding track pad and mouse support for iOS devices. So we're going to be diving into this, taking a little bit of a look at it, and seeing where things go. Stay tuned. So today we're going to be taking a look at iOS 13.4 running on two different devices. The first device we're going to be looking at is iOS 13.4 on the 9.7 inch 2015 iPad Pro. Now the original iPad Pro was released back in November 2015, however I bought it a little bit later on in the summer of 2016. So that's currently, which is the iPad in front of me here, currently the iPad that I use on a daily basis. Now I have a little bit older iPad model, we're going to take a look at that as well. That model is an iPad Air 2 which also does support iOS 13 and iOS 13.4 updates. So I've installed iOS 13.4 on both of these devices so we're going to take a look at it and see if it supports the trackpad support which I've already done some research on and I know um, both models should support the trackpad but I want to try it firsthand here. I'm going to show you uh, the different gestures and get into some more details in just a minute on how it exactly works. So we're first going to start off by going into settings to pair our mouse or trackpad with iOS 13.4. So we're going to click on the settings icon and go down to the Bluetooth icon. When we get into Bluetooth, you'll notice that here's a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices that are either connected to my iPad or are not currently connected to my iPad. Make sure an important thing before you go trying to pair this with iOS 13.4 is make sure that you unpair it from like your Mac or any other device that you might have had your mouse or trackpad paired to first. It's a really important point. Otherwise, it might not find it in iOS 13.4. So looking at the screen here, I am going to turn on the mouse and it should pop up under the other devices. And there it is right there. I've named this mouse Silver Mouse. So we're going to click on Silver Mouse. It's going to pair and it's saying pair request and we are going to click on the pair icon. It is going to bring it up here on the screen. So you'll see in fact that we do have trackpad support on this device. This again is the iPad 9.7 inch from 2015. So it's the first iPad Pro model running iOS 13.4. So back on the screen, You'll notice, for instance, we could click on like notifications or sounds. It looks just like a, a, a mouse, only it's a dot. Now, Apple decided to do this mainly for the only reason that we really know about at this point in time is to make it look a little bit more uh, cohesive in with the mobile or iOS or iPad OS operating system. So that's why it's not a pointer, it's an actual dot. It, they wanted to make it look a lot more like a finger or a gesture type based. Um, icon. So you'll notice when I start moving the mouse around the screen, it will actually disappear after I leave the mouse stationary for a matter of a few seconds. You'll notice that it should disappear right there. So it looks like it's about a 10 second wait and it will completely disappear from the OS. So I'm actually going to click on the home button and go to our home screen here. So you'll notice that over here on the left hand side you can actually monitor your battery's uh, performance on your mouse and your magic keyboard which was we already knew about before, right? But now you can actually see your battery level on your mouse and monitor the overall health of that here. And you'll notice when we, when we move over an app, you'll notice that it like sticks or pins the cursor, so to say, to the app. So when we move it around the screen, you'll notice that the icons kind of get big and it's like, it's almost as if we're pressing or hovering over the icon with our finger, but instead we're hovering over with a mouse. So 
Um, let's try to go in. We're going to actually try launching Safari down here at the bottom. You have scrolling as well. So this is natural scrolling. You can scroll just like a regular mouse. So say if we go up here to the top and uh, click on tech specs on the new iPad Pro, we're going to talk about the iPad Pro a little bit later on in a different video. So as you'll notice, um, I can scroll down the page, uh, look at the tech specs of a product for instance. So if I want to go back, so all I have to do, I believe it should work. Ah, yes. So you have to swipe naturally. So that's, so go forward and back on the page and you, it's natural scroll direction. And I'll show you how to change that a little bit later on in the video as well, because for me at least, when I'm on my computer, I don't like it scrolling the way Apple wants it to scroll. I like the, the inverse, the thing that I'm kind of more used to. So I'll show you how to go change that in the settings in a minute. When you hover over text, it's interesting because you'll notice it doesn't say a mouse or this circular dot type of icon. It actually changes to a text symbol. So I can actually click and drag and then I can right click. I believe I can right click. So I'm not exactly sure how you copy. Hmm, interesting. Well, I'll have to figure, I'll have to play with that a little bit later on. <laughs> but you'll notice that we can scroll down the page. If you hover over a link, it turns back into circle dot. And you can click on a link just like a mouse and you have full mouse support on the iPad. It's pretty cool. Um, works pretty good. I know there are a lot of different gestures you can use. I'm not sure what they support currently with um, the Magic Mouse. I know the Magic Trackpad has more gestures you can actually do. So if you're interested in watching a video on that, I don't have a Magic Trackpad, otherwise I'd show you guys how that exactly works. But for the mouse, it does provide great scroll ability. You can, again, go um, back to a page, you can go forward, and you can also access a Control Center from hovering up here in the top right corner. Let's actually go in and take a look at the settings right now. So if we go into the settings, and if we go down to general, you'll notice that there is now a new trackpad and mouse area that we can go to. Now, this does not show up in iOS 13.4 unless you have a trackpad or a mouse Bluetooth paired to your device. So you will not see that option if you do not have one currently paired to your device. So if we click on trackpad and mouse, you'll notice that we have a few options here. So our first option is the tracking and speed. So this is how fast or slow your, the mouse cursor will move on your screen. So if I set it down to slower, you'll notice it takes it me a lot more movement of the actual mouse to move it across the screen. I kind of liked where we had it before. It seemed very fluent, it seemed speedy, so I'm gonna leave it right about in here. I think that's the default. So one review I looked at actually showed if you moved the uh, cursor up to the fastest, it can go a little rabbit symbol here, that it actually might be better if you're on a bigger display device, such as the new iPad 12.9 inch displays, because you can get your uh, cursor, so to say, from one side of the screen to the other a little bit faster. But for this instance, I'm just gonna leave it down here on this setting. I really like that speed. Actually, I might bump it up one more. Yeah, it's better. Natural scrolling, this is what I was talking about before. So what natural scrolling does is when you're on an iPad, if I wanna go up the page, I go like this. If I wanna go down the page, I go like this. So that's what natural scrolling does, but for your mouse. So for instance, if I scroll up on this, it's actually going to go down the page. And if I scroll down, it's gonna go up. So it's like the opposite or sort of inverse of, um, how you would naturally scroll. So on my Mac, I absolutely hate having the natural scrolling turned on. I actually have that feature turned off. I absolutely hate it. When I'm using a mouse, it messes me up every single time because it's not intuitive to me. I'm used to it the other way. So I'm actually gonna switch this to off. And when we switch this to off, now if I scroll down, here, you'll notice the page moves down with my scroll. If I move up, it will move up. 
And now we're gonna go down to this last option, so the secondary click. So secondary click is like your left and right mouse click. So that's currently turned off, and that's why before when I was trying to right click and do like a copy, I couldn't do that on some text. So actually we're gonna go in and turn this on. The secondary click is set to off. Right now we have the option for right or left. So by default, this again, it depends what hand your, your primary hand is. So my right hand, I want to use right. So if I use right, that'll make my secondary click the right click. And if I had a left, that would make my left click, which is if I was left-handed, it would make sense to have the left click turn on left-handed. So I'm gonna switch it to right-handed, go back, and then we're gonna click on our home button, and then we're gonna go back into our uh, Safari session here. So now you'll notice I scroll up, I scroll up here on the page, and it will actually scroll indeed up, like I am used to, so that's really nice. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that it actually goes down the page like it should, in my opinion at least. Now I know this is different for everyone, so pick the way you like to scroll best and choose that option. If you're more used to the natural scrolling, leave it on. If you're not, you have the option to turn it off. Apple's made it really nice in iOS 13.4 to give lots of flexibility to its users. We're actually going to scroll down here and get to find some text. So you'll notice on like the screen um, down here, uh, let's try actually highlighting some text now and using our left and right click. So now if I right click, you'll notice that the copy notification comes up and I can actually copy that and bring that over to say like a Word document or a notes uh, document as well. So it's a super nice uh, feature to have. So it's basically just like using a computer, only a little bit, I would say a little bit more intuitive. I could take this whole paragraph for instance, select it, right click, copy, and then I could go into a different app on my iPad and paste it. Um, if you are a computer user, this is really a big game changer because it makes your iPad almost feel like you're on a actual computer, which is really cool because there's a lot of apps out there that developers have you know, developed that you can't get on a Mac or a PC that are on an actual computer that you can only use on a mobile platform. So if you have a 12.9 inch iPad and using a keyboard and a mouse, that just is a complete game changer in my opinion because now you can use apps to their full potential. You have the Apple Pencil, you have a magic trackpad, a magic mouse, a magic keyboard. You have all these different types of input devices now for the iPad, that's what makes it super super nice, super versatile to be able to use it for just about anything, which it, it's amazing to me that like, I'm so happy that Apple has done this. I'm so happy Apple has finally brought trackpad and mouse support to iOS 13, iOS 13.4 in specific. And it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to use this feature. And I think I'll actually wind up using my iPad more. It'll, I'll wanna take it on trips. It's like, oh yeah, I just popped that in my backpack, my magic mouse, I'm good to go. It's like a full computer now right in front of me. So I hope you guys really enjoyed watching uh, the demo here of iOS 13.4 and trackpad and mouse support. We're actually going to take a look at a second iPad as I mentioned a little bit um, earlier on in the video. The iPad Air 2 which is actually the oldest iPad model that will support iOS 13.4. Before we take a look at that, I'm actually uh, going to go back to our settings and show you how to unpair this. So we're going to go into settings, we're going to click on Bluetooth, and you'll notice that we have the silver mouse here. We're going to click on the little information symbol, and we're going to click on forget this device, and forget device. And what that'll do is it will unpair successfully our mouse from the iPad so we can pair it to a different iPad or a different Mac. So now I got my iPad Air 2 in front of me and the Magic Mouse and we're going to try hooking it up to the iPad Air 2. So again, we are going to go into our settings. We're going to scroll up to Bluetooth and it should find it. It did in fact find the Silver Mouse, Silver Magic Mouse. And yes, it looks like we do have success, so now we can move our mouse around and we have full control of the iOS or iPad OS operating system here. Let's try some map functionality here really quick. Let's try zooming into like uh, New York. So we're just going to double click. We can zoom in here. 
and yeah, it's, it works really nice. You can click and drag around. Um, I don't have the um, two button support enabled on this, so actually we're gonna exit out of the map really quick and we'll have some more functionality if we enable that. So we're gonna go back into here and we're gonna actually enable that really quick. So we're gonna scroll down to general. We're gonna see this trackpad and mouse support. So now I'm into the general settings. I'm gonna keep our tracking speed at about that. I'm gonna turn the natural scrolling off and then I'm gonna turn on the right hand click on our mouse. We're gonna go back home and then we're gonna go back into our maps. And then now, let's see what options. Oh, that's very cool. So like, for instance, it doesn't look like we have a zooming functionality inside of iOS 13.4 in the Maps application, at least not on the Magic Mouse. We can just double click for instance, but if we hover over a certain thing, we can click on it, say like the Statue of Liberty. We can scroll effectively in there. We can close out of it. And if we right click, this is actually pretty cool. So if we right click on this, we can actually say, oh, I want to call or go to the home page." So we can say, for instance, let's launch Safari and go out to the Statue of Liberty website. And that's pretty cool. So it brings it up for us. Um, very cool. So guys, that's pretty cool. We actually were able to get the magic mouse to work on iPad OS 13.4 on the iPad Air 2, which came out six years ago in 2014. So that just goes to show that Apple is leaving and letting their iPad OS live on to even legacy-like devices like the iPad Air 2. So I'm super excited that we were able to get that to work on such an old device and have no issues whatsoever. So guys, let me know what you think of the review. Leave your comments down below, hit the like button, click the subscribe button, share this video, make it go viral, and we'll see you next time in another Love Tech video.